everyone, Susie here from Minnesota and I garden in a zone 4B, but I'm just gonna say zone 4 because I don't think 4A and 4B, I can grow all that much more. So let's say zone 4, so I'm just gonna be talking about winter sowing in this video. I'm not doing it, I promise you, I will make a video about that and I'll take you through the steps that I'm gonna be taking. If you have already done your winter sowing for zone 4, happy seed sowing, can't wait to hear about your success on it. And I, last year was the first year that I have winter sowed and I had really great results, but I'm by no means a pro at this. So there are probably some other YouTube channels that have much more in depth about the winter sowing, but I'm a zone four. So realistically, I'm kind of like, how big are my plants going to be by the time I go and plant them out in the middle of May? And um, so, like I said, I had great results. I'm going to do in two ways, the traditional way with the milk jugs, and I like the milk jugs because they're easy to cut and easy to put holes in. I did not like the whole duct tape, and I know there's other things you can do for that, but I'm just going to use, it's what I have, and I think twist ties and whatnot would be a little fiddly for me, And um, but when I did the video last year, I sewed them, I put them where I wanted them to be, and left them. I didn't even check on them throughout the entire growing season from March to let's say the start of May. And so I didn't check on moisture level, I didn't check on germination, I didn't cover them even if the temps were dipping really low, I, I wasn't concerned. They were on the south side of my house. That is a very warm spot so they probably had the heat bouncing from the house too. So there's that. Um, so like I said, I didn't baby them at all and everything germinated. I think I even did lavender and had a little bit germinate, but, um, so I did Cerinthi, I did Cleome, Verbena bonariensis, uh, Delphinium, California poppies, Cleome, if I did not say that. And I did a lot of duplicates because I, I tried to only put so many seeds into a container. And again, Great results but they weren't huge plants and unfortunately the the video that I had about the reveal I lost the footage so I, I don't have that but they were they were decent Um, the delphinium did germinate but I think all that germinated were the cotyledon seeds or the cotyledon leaves that's the first set of leaves on them so a very 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 immature plant so it's something where um, I could have kept growing on in the the jug, the jugs here, but unfortunately, too, what happened is we had a really hot day, left them out, and they pretty much all of them got fried, except for the verbena. But the verbena, I had already potted them up, and then I had them in a different spot. So the the rest is, I'm, I was so bummed because I had high hopes for the delphinium, but everything did germinate. the The plants just weren't wow, except for the cerinthi. That was, but that's a cold tolerant plant. So I'm not surprised that that looked amazing. But I will be going this route for uh, Verbena bonariensis. Had, that's the only way I can get that flower to germinate. I've tried growing it indoors under grow lights, putting it in my fridge for cold stratification. I, I think I got one little seed to come up, but with winter sowing, great success for them. I'm, I'm definitely gonna do that again with the Verbena. I just know I have to pot them up because they didn't have much of a root system. I, I am a zone four, so there is that. And uh, let's see, like I said, the delphinium did. I would, if they would have lived, I would have potted those up and let them grow a little bit before putting them into my garden beds. They would not have tolerated that transition well. Um, and then Cleome, I'll be doing this way too because they don't throw too much of fit with being pried apart. So I will go that way. I'd love to reuse my plastic. So this is the route that I would take. If I lived in a warmer climate, I would probably do winter sowing for a lot of my stuff because it was just super fun, super easy, and a little less stress. On that note, they're not completely hardened off. Um, they're not used to wind. So when you open up your containers, a lot of times your plants just kind of <laughs> wilt a little bit. Well, it's because they're also used to each other to support them up and the sides of your container but they are not used to breeze on them. They're not used to being watered from above. So they are a little weak. So I say there's just a little bit of transition. I would say you do still have to harden them off to a wind because they're not strong that way. As far as the UV rays, I think they're perfectly fine because I had no scorching until they fried. <laughs> um, but so this way I'm doing a little bit differently. 
because some of the plants I'm growing, and these are all gonna be flowers. I, I love flowers. I do a little bit with vegetable. I usually get my starts, so I go that route. But um, a lot of these don't like their roots to be disturbed or they don't transplant well. So there's just certain things on the seed packets that I look for that's like, I'm gonna go this way. So I have a plastic bin pretty deep and I drilled holes in the sides here, all the way around four sides, just for um, ventilation. And I drilled drainage holes in the bottom, but I didn't drill any on top. And I know some of you are gonna say, oh, you need to do that. But here's the thing. I March can dump on us. Like we can get a ton of snow. Last thing I want is for these containers to have snow mounted on top and be dripping snow. And not only that, only a few of my containers are going to get watered. Not all, unless I would drill a hole everywhere I have a container. So I'm just going to control the the moisture level in this. And I just I feel better that way. If that March can just dump a lot of snow and I like I said I just don't want that to be dripping snow cold snow into my seeds or seedlings I don't think that would be good for them so on that note what I'm just going to do is well every three or four days I'm going to come out and check on hydration level on these and it, I might be able to go a lot longer than three or four days just because not much moisture is sucked out of it until your seeds start to grow because this creates a nice little um moist environment greenhouse effect so the moisture moisture should stay in but now i'm going to open this up and also it allows for me to take the cover off on really nice days to even give more ventilation to the plants and maybe allow a little bit of that wind to get through at some point i'm going to probably take these out especially the ones that have germinated probably put it into a different uh, bin where more air can get to it. So it's just used to um, the, the wind. <laughs> so I have saved all of these yogurt containers. I think I have four more to go before I fill this up. So this bin will give me 30 plants. And this one is a nice size. I can end a drainage hole in the bottom. I just poked a hole in it. And again, I like to reuse all the plastic if I can. It's just, it's it makes this a very cheap process. And to reuse the plastic that we've already bought, and that's just, to me, I'm putting it to good use. But I think there's enough room in here, like with soil, for my plants to grow happily. Like I said last year, most of these did not have a root system where I'm like, mm, none of them were pot bound. I mean, it was... So I think this will be fine. And also what's nice is when I do sow the seeds, if I'm a little heavy at it, I'm just going to go in and thin to the strongest plant, just one seedling growing in each container. And I, 50 plants in these containers will be fine because I also have a few jugs that I'm going to be doing too. So I'm, And I'm definitely not hurting for plants because I've got so much going on indoors in my um, plant room. So I'm not concerned. But I did pick the varieties that do, that, that sounds like it just needs some cooler temps to germinate and um, that don't transplant well. But yeah, so I think these will be good. I'm just going to have to figure out a labeling system. I think I'm just going to keep it um, on a notebook, maybe label it number one with what it is behind it instead of writing the whole name. Just save myself a little bit of time there. But yeah, so the other thing is once I have germination, a lot of these are cold tolerant plants. So I'm hoping that I could probably just transition them in or transfer them into uh, like one of the long black trays. And that way even more air can get into it and I can just get a little more used to uh, the, the outside temps. I, I think this way will, will work pretty good. And the only reason why I think that will be definitely enough soil room is because last year growing indoors with hookra, what I did is I, um, when I up potted them, I went right into a big container. It's, I, they were, they're pretty big, they're a nice size. But hookra have a shallow root system and they just grow a lot slower. So what happened is I've got all that wet soil there and like a little bit of a root system and th that's not a good environment for the roots. So I just find that this will just be a little bit easier on the plants. We'll see. Maybe a little more watering on my part, but I'm just going to take a watering can, water from above. That way they're used to that weight on top and be watered on top. And, you know, if it's raining, I'm just going to 
take the lid off and let the rain get to it. And we'll go that way because I have drainage holes in the bottom. Will this take a little bit more than going this way? Maybe. But definitely we'll keep you updated on that. But I, I like to try new things. And when it comes to gardening and seed sowing, I don't want to say this is the only way to do it. This is... Just try. Sometimes what works for one person doesn't work for another. And if the way you're doing it is working for you, stick with it. I would say if it's not broke, don't fix it. And then these are just plastic containers I have from last year. And I'm, I'm running out of them, so that's why I'm saving the yogurt ones. I'm asking um, family to, they, they eat the same yogurt I do, save the containers. So same thing. I've just got holes around it drilled in. And for the bottom, this will give me 20, so that's pretty good. So I'll go over the variety that I'm doing. So the this one, I'm, I've am i already sewed indoors. I had the delphiniums, when sewing them, I had put them into a wet paper towel and then in a Ziploc bag and then into my fridge for about two weeks. And then I took them out and then um, I sold them in some potty mix and I'm patiently waiting for germination. The first batch I did has germinated, not a lot, but a little bit, but this is the second batch that I'm just, I'm hoping this one seems really cool. And I got two packets of these and this is from SwallowtailGardenSeeds.com. No picture, but this is a Delphina, Delphinium, and it's a dwarf variety. And it's a perennial for my zone. I like to I like to do a lot of perennials and some annuals, but this one I'm really hoping because I think it'd be neat to have a dwarf variety and you know all that beauty without having to worry about staking it. Um, I do have some big varieties too, but the, I think this one would be really cool. So I did get two packets and this one I am saving. I'm hoping I have germination before I start my winter sowing. So I, I don't know because there's only 25 seeds in this. I am, I'm looking forward to this and starting it indoors. I'm hoping I get ahead of the growing season and maybe it'll bloom for me this year. Whereas winter sowing, I don't know if it would bloom for me this year. It might be a little bit too late for that. So there is that. Um, I'm doing a lot of poppies. Poppies do not like their roots disturbed, which I found out last year along with <laughs> probably just Putting them in a container before a 95 degree day probably wasn't the best idea either. But uh, this is also perennial pizzicato oriental poppy. And again, I, some of these seeds I might do some with the winter sowing and I might just keep some for direct sowing. I'm not sure on that. But so this is a definitely one that I'm going to be doing in their own containers. So I've never grown poppies before in my garden so this will be really fun. And I have not grown this one either. Again, I don't know if I'm going to do winter sowing with this or if I'm just going to direct sow out into a, a container or my flower beds. It's Persian Jewels Mix Love in a Mist, Nigella. And um, they have really neat blooms, but I think they're also excellent as a dried flower too. So kind of interested in that. So a lot of these I'm kind of going back and forth and I, I will definitely do a video and let you know for sure and then which varieties I am for sure doing this route and I might just do it just for the fun of it. So I'm sitting on my floor. I'm a little uncomfortable. Um, this is Poppy Pepper Box. A popover somniferum pepper box. Oh, it's really pretty. Yeah, so these are really tiny so that's but I think this will be really neat. I want to grow the poppies for not only for their blooms. And a lot of this I'm doing for cut flowers. Um, and not for selling, just for my pleasure. But also for the, the seed heads. I think they look really neat. So that's one I don't know about. I mean, it's unique looking, but I'm just not sure. It says 65 to 70 days to bloom. So, and it says bloom in late spring. So... I mean, it doesn't take long for them to bloom. Uh, Larkspur, I have never grown that ever in my gardens. So that's really pretty. Takes 65 to 70 days to bloom also. Uh, and this is where it says, uh, grows best in cool weather, does not transplant well. So I think these will be okay. I mean, transplant, we'll see. Because they still have to transplant them from the container into their um, 
home. I don't know where, but I'll decide that if, if I get germination. But I think this route will be a little bit better than the, the milk jug. So, and the fact that it says grows best in cool weather, I, I think growing going this way is a lot better. And again, I love tall verbena. This likes the warm weather. It's a, a later bloomer, hotter weather, loves it. But like I said, there's just something about, I'm guessing, the cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, that, that back and forth that just really um, spurs this into germination. It could be. Love this. I just, I'll, my garden will never be without this plant. I like it that much. These are seeds I have saved from two years ago, Cleome Rose Queen. And again, I started uh, the winter sowing. They all came up. I had started some indoors last year and none germinated. So I'm going to go with that. And I love Cleome. And they do self seed all over my gardens. But just in case if I don't have enough, I'm going to have some backup. This one I'm really um, looking forward to. But you know, it's always the plant you look forward to that <laughs> disappoints you. It doesn't germinate. But this is so pretty, Orlea. And so I might sew half of these and then keep half back because it says that um, sewing indoors is not recommended. And it says direct sew in early spring when there is still a chance of frost. So that's why I'm like, I think winter sewing will work out the best for these. Just, there's something so pretty about this too. So I can't wait. I'm like, cause I think, I don't know how many seeds are in here. I'm going to try and do half and then maybe half up. Like I said, in a, in a week or two weeks, we'll find out together what I decide to do. But yeah, so far, those are the varieties that I'm going to be doing for winter sowing. Again, I don't do much in vegetables. I just don't think they would be to where I want them when I want to plant them outside. And I, it's on such a small scale that I guess I, I really love flowers a lot, like my vegetables. I mean, if I had to pick it, it would always be green beans, cucumbers, uh, tomatoes. Th those are the must-haves in my garden. But, um, like I said, a lot of those seeds I direct sow as is, so I don't even really start them. But yeah, so I will definitely do a winter sowing video, take you through the steps that I'm going to take and where I'm going to place these. And so hopefully you're, you've decided to do some winter sowing too. Let me know if you have and what varieties you're going to be winter sowing. And um, bye for now.